Hi all, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on J Meter interview questions. So, guys, in this particular video, we will be discussing each and every important questions related to J Meter, and these questions will help you clear your actual J Meter interview. So, without any further delay, let's get started with the first question. So, the first question over here is what is the difference between J Meter and Load Run? So guys, in the actual interview as well, whenever you're asked such kind of questions, like differentiate between so and so, so what you can do is you can grab a piece of paper and on that paper, you can make two columns. Like over here, we have one column for Apache J meter and then we have one column for HP load runner. So then you will write the points of differentiation between these two. So the first point over here is Apache J meter is available free of cost. You just have to download it and use it. But on the other hand, HP Load Runner is pretty much expensive. And there are various editions which are available for HP Load Runner. The next point is you have licenses per installation with Apache JMeter. And in case of HP Load Runner, you have licenses per virtual user. The next point is with JMeter, you can generate unlimited amount of load. Whereas with HP load runner, you have limited load generation capacity. The next point over here is with JMeter, you have less proficient implementations. And with HP load runner, you have high end development and complex to implement techniques. The next point is UI is not up to the mark in JMeter, whereas HP load runner comes with an impressive user interface. Last but not the least, in case of JMeter, it supports Linux, Microsoft, Windows, iOS, and web based. In case of HP Load Runner, it supports Windows, iOS, and web based as well. The only point which is missing here in HP Load Runner is the Linux. The next question is name the common techniques which are used for performance testing. So, guys, there are five testing techniques that are very frequently used in today's time. And those techniques are, as you can see on the screen, spike testing, load testing, volume testing, endurance testing, and stress testing. So these techniques measure the behavior of applications, their working conditions, handle applications with large records, and ensure functionality in case the overall number of users increase rapidly. The next question is explain performance testing. So the process of evaluating the performance of applications under greater load is known as performance testing. Basically, it is non-functional testing and is generally done prior to categorizing the application on production. Actually, this ensures that the application will work fine under all of these circumstances and it will not face issues like crashing during the increased load. So performance monitoring is a very essential task in case of performance testing. The next question over here is performance testing needs a lot of activities to be performed. So name a few of those activities. So there are certain activities that are generally performed during performance testing. And these activities are testing tool selection, performance test execution, performance test planning, analysis of test requirements, analysis of test results, and script implementation. So these activities are pretty common and they can be performed without any difficulties. The next question is, what do you mean by the term JMeter? So JMeter is basically a Java based tool that is meant to test the performance of applications. Its open source nature makes it simply the best for this particular task. A number of testing related to the performance of the applications can simply be handled with this particular tool. It really doesn't matter whether it's web services or web based apps. Moreover, it is capable to handle databases as well as FTP servers. The next question is how requests are sent to the server in JMeter. So basically this is done with the help of samplers. There are several samplers that are present in JMeter and a few of them that are most commonly used are as you can see on the screen, JUnit request, JDBC request and HTTP request. The next question is what do you know about the JMeter features? Extensibility, portability as well as robustness are some of its key features. It is a Java based approach and thus it supports all applications 
based on the same. It is possible for all the users to have the final outcome in a graphical or a tabular format. Test scripts can be created very fast, and this is because of the playback feature that JMeter is equipped with. Also, a user need not worry about the protocols that can be tested to this particular tool. The next question is, explain the process of parameterization. Basically, it is a very simple process that parameterizes the different types of inputs. This is helpful in using the distinct values for the users. The next question is, what do you know about the correlation? So it is basically a process of enticing the data from the previous calls and then sending it to consecutive requests in the form of parameters. It is very helpful in making the scripting easy. And the good part is it is cut a lot of complexity from the process of handling sessions. The next question is, tell us something about configuration elements. Customizing the requests that often come from samplers is an important task in JMeter. The same is performed with the help of configuration elements. They can also be used when it comes to integrating the sampler requests with the data obtained from the CSV file. So the next question over here is, what exactly do you know about a workbench in JMeter? Many times while handling the tasks in JMeter, the need for storing the test element is felt. Workbench stores them all on a temporary basis. In addition to the testing elements, there are certain non-test elements that are also present in it. There is a browser in this tool that helps in configuring these elements in a simple way. Keeping anything on the workbench doesn't actually mean it is stored in the memory permanently. The next question is, explain the ramp up period. When it comes to testing the load of an application, only a few users are considered then all of for effective studying the behavior of the application. This also derives a lot of useful information to know the overall performance of the application. Of course, it takes time in making all of the users in the running state. And this time period is generally called the ramp up time. It is different from different applications depending on the overall number of users, data, and several other factors. The next question is, what are the benefits of using JMeter? So it is a very reliable tool that always makes sure of error-free results. Its compatibility with the applications makes it best in the performance of this particular task. JMeter is an open source tool and thus users need not worry about the cost. Learning and using this tool is not at all a big deal. Apart from this, customization of JMeter tool to fit the exact needs is not at all difficult. There are several tutorials and online communities to help that can eliminate any problem and it declare the presence during this process. The next question is, what are the roles of listeners in JMeter? Can you name a few of them? Well, the prime role of listeners in the JMeter is to save the outcomes of tests after viewing them. Basically, they are also useful when it comes to graphical analysis as well as tabular analysis of the outcomes. A few of the commonly used listeners are aggregate graph, view results tree, and aggregate report. The next question over here is, name a few timers in JMeter. For what purpose they are considered? So some of the most commonly used timers in JMeter are, as you can see on the screen, synchronizing timer, uniform random timer, Gaussian random timer, and constant timer. Many times, test guessing of a thread needs to be stopped for a specific time. Timers are used for the same purpose. They are capable to simply simulate the real user thinking time. The next question over here is, what do you mean by the trend as was point? Spike testing is a very common approach in JMeter. Actually, there are certain tasks that are associated with it. The prime task of Rindesworth's point is to manage spike testing without creating any problem. In reality, the synchronizing timer is considered along with it to perform this task. You need to wait for the time till all of the active users reach a value that is assigned during the load test. The next question over here is, what do you know about assertions? Samplers requests are often made in the JMeter. The actual task of assertion 
is to check certain values in acknowledging the requests from the samplers. So some of the assertions which are used very frequently are XPath assertion, XML assertion, and HTML assertion. Apart from this, another assertion that is being shield is also widely used for same purpose. The next question is, what do you mean by plan a test? There are certain elements that are useful in performance test. So test plan is nothing but a logical packet that contains all of these test elements. Some common examples of this are assertions, thread groups, as well as samplers. The next question is, what do you know about the preprocessors in JMeter? Before the sample requests are accomplished, preprocessors are executed. Basically, these are nothing but the test plan elements that are helpful in ensuring reliability. So some of the widely used preprocessors in JMeter are regex, beanshield, rewriting modifier, link paper for HTML. So the next question over here is, is it possible to run JMeter in GUI? If yes, explain how. So the answer to this question is yes, it is possible to run JMeter in GUI. For this, there is a simple command that you can use. And that command is, as you can see on the screen, JMeter hyphen n hyphen t test dot GMX, then hyphen l test dot JTL. The next question is how JMeter works. So it works in a very simple manner. There is nothing that you actually need to do. It simply acts as a pool of users that often send their requests to the server. Collecting all the responses from the server is the responsibility of JMeter. These responses are then considered for analyzing the performance of the applications. The next question is, what are the different protocols that are supported by JMeter? So for testing the web applications, JMeter uses web protocols such as HTTP server or HTTPS, as well as the HTTP. When it comes to testing the service application, both REST and SOAP are supported by JMeter. Apart from this, it supports HTTP and JDBC for analyzing the applications of the database. Another common protocol that JMeter handles is the LDAP, LDAP or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Also, the protocols for testing the mail servers such as IMAP and SMTP are compatible with JMeter. The next question is, how would you compare JMeter with other similar tools. The best thing about JMeter is the GUI, which is very simple as well as intuitive as compared to other tools. It really doesn't matter which platform you use on computers. Like other tools, it doesn't face any compatibility issues. Also, it is freely available tool due to its open source nature. JMeter is having a very unique feature in it that most of the other tools don't have. And that feature is it can be used easily for automated testing of the applications. The extensible nature makes it simply the best as compared with others. Apart from this, it permits, apart from this, it permits concurrent sampling very easily. All the test plans can be prepared in XML format in JMeter. The next question is, what are the main parts of a thread group? So the main parts of the thread group are, as you can see on the screen, controller, assertion, sampler, configuration elements, and listeners. So controller is something which controls the entire flow of the thread group. If you talk about assertion, so this is responsible for time management. Basically, it checks whether the response is there within the specified time or not. If you talk about sampler, so its task is to send the different requests to the server. The configuration elements manages the information related to the requests that are to be integrated with samplers. And last but not the least, if you talk about listeners, so its task is to save the final outcome of the run. The next question is how sampler and logical controllers in JMeter are different. Both these controllers have their own tasks for which they are responsible. The controller sampler ensures all of the requests are met by the server. On the other hand, the logical controller is responsible for changing the manner of processing the requests that are originated from the elements. The next question is, what are the features of configuration elements? All the variables as well as the defaults that are used in samplers are created through configuration elements. In case the need to change the request raised by the sampler is felt, 
configuration elements can perform this task. With the help of this, Java testing can be made simple by setting the default values. Configuration elements are very helpful when it comes to setting more than one user logins for the web pages. Also, default values can be set which are used by the HTTP controller. The next question is name at least 10 listeners that JMeter is equipped with. So guys, as you can see on the screen, a lot of listeners are present and each is responsible for performing a specific task. And those listeners are summary report, graph results, spline visualizer, monitor results, data writer, response time graph, mailer visualizer, aggregate results, backend listener, bean shell listener. The next question is, what are the applications that you can test with JMeter? So there are certain types of applications that you can test and few of them are FTP, TCP, websites, shell scripts, SMTP, JDBC and LDAP. The next question is, what are the post processors in JMeter? So they are quite similar to the preprocessors. The only difference is that they are used after accomplishment of sampler requests. They can easily be used when it comes to taking values from the sampler response. The next question is, what do you know about the concurrent user hit in JMeter? A concurrent user hit is when a large number of users clash for a similar event of the application under lost test simultaneously. It is because of this concurrency point which is considered and this makes it the virtual users wait until others are already running the scripts. So guys, with this we have come to the end of the session on JMeter interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries or doubts related to this session, then you can write them in the comment section and we will try to resolve them as early as possible. So guys, thank you so much for being with us and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview.